HDR gaming is laughably bad on PC, and it has been for years. It's been supported on Windows for a few years, quite a few of which were spent solely on fixing bugs and issues with Windows itself. But even in 2022, after TVs, monitors, games, and Windows itself have evolved, HDR is still a mess on PC. Consider this a check-in on the HDR state of affairs, aided by a bit of insight from a few game developers. There are three main issues with HDR on PC today. Monitors, games, and dynamic metadata. But we might finally be making some progress so that HDR gaming on PC is just as good as it is on a console. Before diving in, make sure to get subscribed to Digital Trends and leave me a like on this video if you enjoy it. This is a top-down issue, so let's start at the top with monitors. The touchstone for HDR on monitors is VESA's Display HDR certification, which has several different tiers that note different levels of HDR performance. Monitors with a high certification are among the best, but the vast majority of monitors only meet the lowest tier of certification, Display HDR 400. On Newegg right now, for example, 522 of the 673 HDR monitors available only meet Display HDR 400. A closer look at this certification exposes the problem with the vast majority of HDR monitors. The traditional wisdom is that you need a bright monitor for good HDR performance, at least 1,000 nits. That's true for a TV you're several feet away from, but not for a monitor that's a few inches from your face. Brightness is important, but only because it allows for higher levels of contrast. The panel technologies available for most PC monitors, IPS, VA, TN, they just don't have enough brightness or contrast to push good HDR performance, even at the high end. Instead, manufacturers use local dimming, which allows a certain number of zones on the display to adjust their brightness based on what you're seeing on screen. By making dark areas literally darker and bright areas brighter, that increases contrast, and that's a good thing for HDR. That brings us back to the Display HDR 400 certification. This tier, which remember the vast majority of HDR monitors fall within, only calls for global dimming. That means the whole display can adjust its brightness, but not individual zones. And as you might imagine, that doesn't improve contrast nearly as much as proper local dimming. Going up to a higher certification doesn't really help either. The next step up calls for local dimming, but the majority of the most popular monitors just don't have enough zones. The Samsung Odyssey G7, for example, only has eight, while the Corsair Xenion 32 has 16. Compare that to the recent Sony InZone M9, which not only comes with 96 dimming zones, but also full array local dimming, which situates the zones all around the screen and not just on the edges of the display. There are a few exceptions to the bad HDR monitor rule, like the InZone M9 and Alienware's 34QD OLED. But the landscape of HDR game monitors today isn't too different than it was a few years ago. TVs have pushed ahead as contrasty OLEDs have become more available, but monitors have been sitting tight for the better part of four years. That brings us to games. Developers are aware of the state of HDR gaming on PC, and they aren't really inclined to spend precious development time trying to get a perfect HDR picture for lackluster HDR monitors. As Alexander Minya from Dolby Vision Gaming puts it, you still need to deliver a standard dynamic range version of your game, and creating a separate version for HDR means twice as much mastering, testing, and QA. Good luck getting sign off on that. One developer I spoke with says they assume the vast majority of players even concerned with HDR are on a console with a TV, and that's what they target. 
Because of the highly variable performance of HDR monitors and the understandable apathy from game developers as a result, you'll find wildly different HDR experiences depending on what game you're playing and what monitor you're using. On my Odyssey G7, for example, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands looks dark and dull with HDR turned on, but Devil May Cry 5 has transformative HDR that makes scenes look much more natural and vibrant. And if you look up user reports about these two games, you'll find the exact opposite depending on what monitor the person has. In my personal favorite, Destiny 2, a proper HDR calibration slider was only added to the game at the beginning of this year, more than four years after Destiny originally launched. And that brings us to the third issue with HDR monitors, which is static metadata. There are three main standards that deliver all of the color and brightness data from your PC to your display. HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision. HDR10 is almost exclusively what you'll find on PC monitors and it only supports static metadata. As an Ubisoft developer told me, that means the game sets the minimum and maximum brightness values once at the start and hopes to cover every possible lighting situation. Good luck on that. Dolby Vision and Samsung's HDR10 Plus get around the problem with dynamic metadata. Instead of handling brightness and color once, dynamic metadata can adjust the values on a per scene or even a per frame basis. The HDR adjusts to fit the display you're using, getting past a lot of the issues with variation in PC games today. Dolby Vision is standard on a wide range of TVs and it's supported on the latest consoles, but you'll only find it on a select few monitors like Apple's Pro Display XDR. It's not available on any gaming monitors and HDR10 Plus is only available on a few high-end Samsung displays. In 2022, HDR and PC has a monitor problem, a game problem, and a metadata problem, which isn't all too different than the state of affairs a few years back. The good news is that monitors are finally making some progress. Displays like the Endzone M9 are pushing better local dimming at a more affordable price, and QD OLED monitors like the Alienware 34 QD OLED are starting to hit the market as well. And they really aren't that expensive, at least compared to the most expensive monitors you can buy right now. Hopefully at this point next year, HDR will actually be an option for PC gaming, but we have a lot of steps to get there, so we'll just have to wait and see. That's it for me, so leave me a comment about your experiences with HDR gaming on PC and make sure to get subscribed if you wanna see more videos like this. In the meantime, here are two videos that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy.